A few weeks ago, I posted a video discussing some little-known provisions buried in the 1,039 pages of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act that was signed into law in 2021. That video has generated over 5,000 comments so far. In this video, I want to address a few of those comments and update you on how those provisions are being implemented. I am Dr. John Padfield. I'm a business professor and a former Indiana State Representative, and this is Business Reform, where we discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. The first thing I want to address is a common misconception regarding who the National Motor Vehicle Per Mile User Fee applies to. If you want to read the law for yourself, you can find a link to a PDF copy of the law in the description of this video. A number of viewers left comments claiming this provision only applied to electric vehicles because those vehicles do not pay gas tax. However, the law reads that the per mile user fee is to be, quote, applied to road users operating motor vehicles on the surface transportation system, which simply means public roads. Many of the people who thought this only applied to electric vehicles may have been confusing this new national per mile user fee with various state per mile user fee programs, such as those in Oregon, California, and Utah. According to the National Conference of State Legislatures, as of September 2022, Oregon and Utah already had active per mile user fees in place, while Hawaii, Washington, California, Colorado, and Pennsylvania were setting up pilot programs to charge drivers based on the miles they drive. Some of these state programs were focused on collecting per-mile fees only from electric and hydrogen vehicles, since those vehicles do not pay any gas tax, but the 2021 Infrastructure Law directed the United States Secretary of Transportation to pilot a national per-mile user fee program that would apply to all vehicles. The law also states the pilot program would use mileage data obtained from, quote, any of the following vehicle miles traveled collection tools. A, third-party onboard diagnostic devices. B, smartphone applications. C, telemetric data collected by automakers. D, motor vehicle data obtained by car insurance companies. And then skipping down to G, quote, any other method that the secretary considers appropriate. I want to stress, this law only created a pilot program to, quote, test the design, acceptance, implementation, and financial stability of a national motor vehicle per mile user fee. Personally, I think keeping the gas tax for internal combustion engine vehicles and adding a per kilowatt hour tax on EV charging stations would be a much less intrusive way to collect money for maintaining our roads than having a government agency tracking and recording everywhere we drive. Government agencies have a horrible track record when it comes to protecting our personal data. Here are the four biggest U.S. government data breaches that we know about as of October 2024. The U.S. Office of Personnel Management allowed the employment records of over 21 million federal employees and contractors to be stolen. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs allowed the names, dates of birth, social security numbers, and other personal information of over 26 million veterans to be stolen. In this case, the VA paid $20 million of taxpayer money to settle a class action lawsuit. That works out to $0.75 cents per victim of the VA's incompetent data handling practices. In 2009, the National Archives exposed the highly sensitive personal data of 76 million veterans, and in 2015, the entire U.S. voter database, data on all 191 million registered voters in the United States, was exposed due to, quote, human error and oversight. Just these four biggest known incidents means 315 million Americans had their sensitive personal information exposed by federal agencies who were either unwilling or unable to properly protect that information. So I'm not eager to have another government agency monitoring and recording everywhere I drive. To quote my favorite political writer, P.J. O'Rourke, giving money and power to the government is like giving whiskey and car keys to teenage boys.
no matter how much they promise to be responsible, don't do it. But the most common sentiment I saw expressed in those 5,000 plus comments was related to covering or deactivating the soon to be required driver monitoring cameras. The 2021 infrastructure law did not directly mandate driver facing cameras in cars, but it required the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, also known as NHTSA, to implement rules making, quote, impaired driving prevention technology standard equipment in all new passenger motor vehicles. And NHTSA's report on impaired driving prevention technology found that camera based driver monitoring systems are the most mature technology for driver monitoring, while technology designed to directly assess alcohol impairment is still in the research stage. The companies that make driver monitoring cameras are already hard at work integrating facial recognition into the cameras so the car will know who is driving it and if the camera's field of view is wide enough, who all the passengers are in the vehicle. This is being sold as a convenience feature so the car can adjust the audio system and climate system to the preferences of the driver by knowing who the driver is. But if history has taught us anything, it is that any technology capable of being used to spy on people will be used to spy on people. In 2017, Forbes ran a story about how the FBI has been spying on connected cars via safety and convenience features such as the OnStar microphones, for the past 15 years. That means these features have been used to monitor people's conversations in their vehicles in real time since 2002. While some people can get away with covering up cameras, I seriously doubt you will be able to disable driver monitoring cameras this easily. Because it is considered a safety feature, I suspect the camera will need to see a wide-eyed driver looking straight out the windshield in order for the vehicle to start. Otherwise, you are likely to see something like this on your dashboard. I am sure there are some people with the knowledge and tools to disable driver monitoring systems, but it will not be as easy as simply covering the camera with a piece of tape, and in some places it may even be illegal to disable such systems. On the lighter side, another viewer left a comment asking, when are they going to sign into law that all toilets come with video cameras installed? Based on all the laughing emojis at the end of that comment, I am guessing the comment was meant as a joke instead of a serious question. However, in 2020, Smithsonian Magazine ran a story about a new toilet seat with not one, not two, but three cameras built into it. The camera tracks your health and comes equipped with, quote, anal recognition technology so it can determine who is sitting on the toilet. And you thought facial recognition technology was intrusive. No word yet on whether Congress is going to make these toilet seats mandatory. The last frequent comment I want to respond to is all the people asking some variation of the question, how do we stop this or what can we do? There is no easy way to stop all the violations of our privacy. But earlier this week, I posted a solution-oriented video in which I laid out a plan to start reclaiming our privacy from companies engaged in surveillance capitalism. That plan involves sharing these videos with your friends and coworkers to increase the number of people who care about their privacy to the point they are willing to make privacy considerations part of their purchasing decisions. I am currently working on a free online tool I hope to have available in the first quarter of 2025 to make it quick and easy to find companies with good privacy policies so people can vote with their dollars and do business with companies that do a better job of respecting and protecting our privacy. You can watch that video by clicking here. If you appreciate this type of content, please give this video a like and consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching.